Jo, jo. Um. Am I live? I don't know. Okay. <coughs> jo, jo. Um. Am I live? I don't know. Okay. <coughs> jo, jo. Um. Am I live? live? Let's go. Hello, Hanno. Okay. <coughs> no, how are you? <laughs> um. <coughs> Am I live? Um, okay, Hello, this is my okay. first stream. <coughs> no, how um, are you? <laughs> is my audio quality um, good? Can you guys hear me? <coughs> Am I live? Um, okay, Hello, this is my okay. first um, stream. <coughs> no, how are you? Um, <laughs> is my <coughs> audio scanner, because everybody wants good. a QR code scanner? So, am I live? Okay, this is my first um, stream. <coughs> um, <coughs> it's my <coughs> audio because everybody wants a QR code scanner. So, am I live? Okay, this is my first stream. It's my audio because everybody wants a QR code scanner. So, am I live? Okay, this is my first stream. It's my audio because everybody wants a QR code scanner. Scanner. Uh, I feel so like I want to <coughs> name this. Um, okay, so this is my first. Um, it's <coughs> my <coughs> audio because everybody wants to do it. There's some scanner. I feel like I want to name this. Um, okay, this is my first. Um, it's my audio because everybody wants to do it. There's some scanner. Uh, I think I can make the sound like this, maybe. Can you guys? Is there still echo? My voice is speaking 10 times. Oops. <laughs> okay. Is there still circular buffering on the audio? Still? Okay, shit. Mm. Let's see. Is the audio perfect for me? Now it's okay? Okay, let's go. The engineer. <laughs> Um, let's do this. We want to do, I think, so usually when I do API design, I, I usually do TypeScript first, um, or at least like the JS side first. I'm very quiet now. Okay. Now I'm louder. Um, <laughs> say something, Mark, I'm saying something. Wave at least I'm waving Ahmed. <laughs> Um, so I usually do like JS side first and then take a look at how it's possible to do it on a native side. So I'm going to create a file called it code scanner and we're going to export an interface, call it, well, let's export a function actually, create code scanner. And then we also are going to use a hook called use code scanner. which is essentially just a memo for get code or create code scanner. Cool. So create code scanner. Um, we want to have code scanner props maybe, or code maybe just call it code scanner. Actually, I don't think we need to create a code scanner. I think that this can just be a type, to be honest. We want to have the code types and then code type it can be a type of like QR barcode for now. And this can be an array, right? You can de detect multiple types of code. Um, and then we just have a callback, right? On code scanned. And then maybe, I don't know if that's possible yet. Let's do type T extends code type here, which is type code type. And maybe we can have the, like the frame of it. I don't know. Number X, Y width and height. And then we have a code here. Right. Actually, we can also do this. Let's see. Yeah. 
T and then code T. Okay, and now when you create a code scanner, let's see, let's say uh, barcode scanner, we can do code scanner. Ah, oh, shit, you need to. Okay, yeah, no, I think we need the utility function here. So what I want to do is I want to have it like, um, too late to apologize. <laughs> um, what we want to do is uh, we want to, hey, Rodrigo, uh, we want to have it typed so that you create a code scanner and can only receive codes of the certain type, I think. Maybe that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense or if that's just over-engineering the problem. Um, but maybe, does it make sense actually? I think this is just over-engineering it a lot. So maybe we'll just not make this generic, not make this generic. Um, code type, oops, okay. And this is just, yeah. Okay, so this is just the type with the frame or we can call it location. I think frame is better, right? Frame, frame location. Any thoughts on that? Frame, I think frame is good. Um, X, Y, width and height are relative to camera coordinates. And then we have, this is a code scanner that you pass to the camera and code types are, yeah, for now QR or barcode. And then you get a callback. And then maybe also frequency. Let's see how we want to use this. We want to do types code type and then callback is going to be, actually, I'm not sure if, I mean, how would you memorize this? You would go, uh, you would do like code scanner is use code, come on, save. Use code scanner. Ah, oh, it's not exporting it. Shit. Index. And now we need to export it as well. So the tricky part here is to also make it available for non-function components. So use code scanner. And then we have the idea is that we have an array. Is it imported? What do you mean you cannot find? Oh, okay. So that you have an array, let's say barcode, and then, and then ideally you would have a dependency array down there. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably the idea. But then how would you specify like the frequency? Do you need to specify the frequency? No, we just, yeah, we need to code scanner. Let's just leave it at that for now. Let's just do it like this. Yeah, and then console.log code. And then this is obviously not memorized yet, but whatever. So this is going to return a code scanner. Cool. Um, I think we might also need uh, another parameter here that basically specifies the you know the frequency of how often this should be called. But let's leave it at that for now um, and just try to implement it on a native side. I usually always do iOS first because that's generally like the easiest part. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to we're going to need to pass it to the native camera component. Um, so let's just add the code scanner probably down here at events. Yeah. So code, maybe all at the bottom code scanner, right. Okay. For now, we're not using a description yet. Yeah. Not too lazy for that right now. Um, and then this can just be directed or passed straight to the camera. We need to remove the frame processor now because I think I have an idea of how we want to um, actually implement this. Okay, TypeScript is bugging. Let's see. Yeah, cool. Okay, works now. 
Mm, so we have a callback. Ah, my bad. We didn't export the co code type here. Code. And now code. And we have code here. Perfect. So we can log the code now. Um, yeah, I think I also thought about another API, which was basically like this. Use code scanner. You pass an object and then you have types barcode on code scanned code. And then you also have like, you know, maybe uh, interval of like 300. So it gets uh, called every, every like 300 milliseconds at most, right? So not uh, any more frequent than that. Um, so that it just doesn't, you know, spam the bridge or something. Um, so maybe we're going to use this API later instead, because that will also be a little easier to memorize, right? So you could do use callback here. Although it looks a little bit ugly, it actually works a bit better. Or you do, or we had a dependency array right here, right? And then you don't have to use callback or memorize that because we also need to memorize that theoretically. So yeah, maybe this is a better API because now we have the possibility of adding more options and you know maybe in the future also um, like a different algorithm for the code detection or any other future options like I don't know, detect, whatever. Um, yeah, I think this is a better API to be honest. Let's just refactor that real quick. So we have, essentially we're just doing a use memo. Is that, is that stupid? I don't know. Is that stupid? Whatever. Let's leave it at that for now. I think, you know, it works. Um, so let's implement it. Let's open the native project. And yes, I use GitHub Desktop. Don't, why not build it on top of frame processor? Um, well, because frame processors are first of all, optional right now. And second, there is a native iOS API called Vision and, um, sorry, not Vision, uh, metadata um, output. And I think it is more efficient on memory and everything if you just attach that directly instead of going through a frame processor. So this is, yeah, this is as efficient as it can be and doesn't require frame processors and it's just, easy to set up, but there is one downside to this. Um, you can't add or, or you can't enable f video, photo, code scanner and frame processor because the code scanner is essentially a new output we're adding here. So photo is one output, video is another and frame processor is another output. Um, actually, sorry, no video and frame processor are combined in one output, but preview is one other output. So we have three outputs, which is the maximum a camera can support. Um, so yeah, you cannot use code scanner with photo and video true. That's the one downside of a code scanner. Um, but yeah, I th maybe it works on iOS. Let's just test it first before we do any assumptions. So we open the AV capture session and in here, I'm just not going to connect the prop right now. I'm just going to implement the code scanner directly first and see if it like, you know, if we can attach it. So this is where the outputs are. We have the this first input, you know, the camera device itself. We have a photo output. We have video output, which is video and frame or video recording and frame processor. And then we also have preview kind of implicitly because yeah, it's just it's a, it's added a different way. It's a bit weird. Um, so let's do code scanner here. Actually, let's maybe commit that. Yes, API. Uh, yeah, we didn't do much to be honest. Uh, whatever. Code scanner. So if true, if code scanner, we don't have the prop yet. So if true, we're going to. I think it's called metadata output is AV capture metadata output, right? Yeah. Do you link to donate? Uh, I don't know how you can donate on YouTube actually. So no, no don donation at the moment. <laughs> I have no idea how to. Uh, let's see. 
let's see. Yeah, no, I don't know how I can set up donations. Um, but thank you for, for asking. Um, so yeah, we have a AV capture meta metadata output. Let's just take a look at the documentation real quick. Um, specific set of metadata, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and then we also have the available types. Aha, okay, so you need to detect which types actually are supported and then you get the types. So I think the reason why you need to check if the type is supported first is because there's some hardware support for some stuff. I think the new APIs um, can even detect like horses or something. Like, you know, they have animal detection and everything in there. Um, so yeah, they're really, really powerful, I guess. And this is not available on every phone. So available metadata object types is for example what we could query we could like we could check this if it contains um yeah these are the types holy shit there's a lot of types oh no okay that's it micro micro qr what the fuck is a micro qr human full body human body face dog body <laughs> so yeah there's a lot of cat body. There's a lot of different types. I think we just want to have an API that detects like, you know, traditional codes and not trying to do. So what I, what I generally avoid, to, you know, doing is like specifying like cat body here and then say, okay, cat body is iOS only. I think that's kind of ugly. And to be honest, who really uses cat body? You know, in this case, I think, you know, basically providing a frame process API. Um, allowing the user full control over what to detect makes more sense um, because I don't think you're going to build your next app detecting cat cats. I don't know, maybe you are. Then sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just you know remove this and only add the options that are actually cross-platform. Um, right. So we're going to create this output and then we're also going to check if we can add that output. So guard capture session dot can add output and then a metadata output. And I think we need to set the... This is interesting. Okay, there's also a rect of interest, which basically tells it to only look inside a certain area of the frame, um, which is yet another option that we could add to this code scanner type. So we definitely need the other API. We don't want to pass everything as a separate prop here in the hook, where is it? Oh, there's too much code in here. Um, so we instead want to have an object object here with all like four options, like you know, rect of interest, and then is there a rect? Do I have a I don't know, like x num rect of interest, and then also like interval, you know. Yeah, we need to add a good description later. But yeah, so we have four options here. We definitely need another API for this later. Um, okay, so we have the rect of interest, which we could use, and we could also use uh, the types, yeah. Right, and I guess by default it doesn't detect any types. So if we set this to, let's say, QR, right? So it just detects QR codes. Um, then it will call the delegate. This is the delegate um, with the specified types. We need to actually create the delegate now, which is a bit annoying in Xcode because I'm working in the example repo and I can't really add files here because this is you know a local pod and to add a file, a Swift file, I need to open the original project and then add the file and then rerun pod install and then the file is there. So this, this is a bit inconvenient right now. But yeah, delegate is self and we need to override it in a second. And then it, can we add the output? If we can't, we're going to error out. Code scanner. And this is going to throw a, what is it? unsupported output. The output is not supported. Maybe we could use another error. Let's set it to do there. Throw more explicit error. 
tell the user to disable photo or video. Cool. And then, okay, so a Swift guard is basically, what's your favorite type? My favorite type is uh, human body. Um, okay, QR. Um, what's your favorite type, Dr. Dre? <laughs> And we're going to add, where is this? Why am I doing this up here instead of beforehand actually? This is a bit weird. Whatever, add output, meta.output, yeah. Um, and then it will be added and then it should also be called. Why is the previous project not opening? To go into package, iOS, this one, this one. Um, let's see, we need Smurf body. I don't think there's a Smurf body scanner. Does the QR type recognize barcodes or is a specific type for that? Um, there are speci specific types, so you can specify different types. Um, I can show you the types again. It's, uh, uh, where is it? So it's at stack, cat body, whatever that is, code, whatever, 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 data matrix, whatever that is. I actually have no idea what this is. I know a dog. I've seen a dog before. I've seen a face before. I've seen humans before. I don't know what the difference between a human body and a human full body is. I don't know. Maybe there's an upgrade. Maybe like humans got some new, like a, there's a new version, like the human two or something. Um, then you have micro QR, micro PDF. I don't know where there's micro codes for that. QR and whatever that is. Is there a bar? Is it called barcode? Data bar, whatever. I don't know. I just know QR. Um, cool. So we need to add that. We need to add the delegate function, which is called, I have no idea what it's called. Uh, <laughs> this one. So we need to call it camera, or actually let's call it camera view plus code scanner. Very simple. And then move it down here. We have record video and take photo as well. So I think it makes sense. So what we need to do is we need to create an extension for the camera view, which extends this delegate. Uh, Data matrix is just another QR like spec. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, we need to add AV foundation and then we can overwrite the func capture meta data. Yeah, this one. And then now we can just print whatever we get meta data output objects, whatever. Just print the first one or let's just print the count for now. And then we need to reinstall pods. Close this one. Actually, I need an iPhone here. Not this one, okay. Um, yeah, how can this, oh, wait, what, how is this a get only property? I'm doing something wrong. Set, I need to set the delegates. Okay, why does this have a queue? I don't know, let's just use the video queue. Ah, so oops, self. Okay, and now if the code scanner is true, iPhone 11 Pro or Samsung Smart Fridge. There we go. Let's just run this and see what happens. Mm. Yeah, I think in the meantime I could create a new API. Um, Oh, 
I'm not sure if I want the user to be to use use memo instead of like a custom hook, like use code scanner, which is essentially the same thing as use memo, but with a type. Um, yeah, I think this makes more sense. Like use code scanner and then just pass in a code scanner and we just memoize it and return it directly. I think this is, it's it sounds stupid, but it's essentially just, you know, um, type safety. I need to connect to my Wi-Fi actually. Um, can I stream my phone? Is that a good idea or no? Mm. Movie recording. Oh shit. I did something terribly wrong. Fuck. Oh. Okay. What happened now? Is it running? Oops. Okay. It crashed. Nice. Um. I need a QR code as well. I'm going to scan some stupid shit. This is not what we want. Can I just QR code generator? Let's generate what website URL. Yeah, no, I'm not signing up with Google. I need to sign up with Google to download a QR code. Crazy. Um, this is weird. This is for some reason just not doing anything. Adding video data output. It's just stuck here for some reason. Let's rerun this. Oh, I should, yeah, I should probably remove the video. Should probably remove the video output as well. Let's see. It's 1.30 a.m. in your place and you're up watching my stream. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, yeah, I can, I can, I think I can publish this later as well. I don't know. It's just a boring ass code stream. Um, I don't know why nothing is happening here. Oh, okay. Now it's working. I think there was just some Wi-Fi thing, whatever. Okay. The Xcode debugger is like really, really slow lately. I don't know why. Come on. Come on, come on. Hello, Angelo. <laughs> Why is it so slow? Ah, reason. Unsupported type found QR code. <laughs> Wait, what? It doesn't support the QR code? Okay. Um, maybe it doesn't support the QR code because we already added a video output. So maybe I should do this first, like I did up here. And then pixel format type, interesting. And then check first, and then it will probably error out here. But anyways, we need to check the available types. Metadata output, available metadata types, right? And then we are going to run this again. Now, oh shit, I opened Android Studio. And remove video because we don't need the video output right now. Right, 
I'm not going to post a code on my blog. I'm going to release this in Vision Camera actually. Publishing this later would be very helpful. Yes, I'm going to integrate this in, in Vision Camera directly. Don't know about YouTube, but I will script it. Um, okay, let's see if we can add this. We can, cool, okay. And then the available type types is zero. Why is it zero? Why is there nothing in there? What the fuck? Maybe I need to add it to the session first and only then. Let's check the docs here. Yeah, okay. If it is connected to an AV capture connection. Yeah, okay. So we first need to, so everything in iOS is like, you know, connected um, to some specific input. And this is an output, then the camera input device, which is your actual like camera, you know, on the back of your phone, is the input. And then there's also a connection <coughs> property. And it reads the connection the same way that a like preview view reads the connection. So you first need to add it to the output, which makes it like bind a connection or, or find a connection or whatever. Um, and then you can actually, you know, read those properties. Um, and this is what we need to do. Thank you, thank you guys for for your support. Um, it's by the way, fun fact: Xcode now never like uses the USB connection, even though my phone is connected to the to the Mac, um, because they think Wi-Fi debugging is a good idea. And as you can see, it's like really, really slow now. Okay, so we have. 25 values we have 20, 25 supported types um yeah basically every type is supported i think even face and cat and dog body so if you want to detect some some dogs you know some some real dogs then you can go ahead and use this um but otherwise we're going to just use qr and then hopefully where's code scanner can you see code scanner there it is and here, let's run it and see what happens. Okay, nothing is being called. Let's scan. Let's scan this code. Okay. Nice, nothing is happening. Oh no, okay, I detected the code. It's caught on a breakpoint. Um, and we have um, one metadata output, which is a machine readable code object. Nice. Um, so this is a QR code scanner on iOS implemented. We need to bridge it to React now, and we need to call on like the native event for this. Uh, but yeah, let's see what it contains. Yeah, it has the corners in there. It is not decoded. String value is for whatever reason nothing. So I think you need to access string value to actually decode it. Um, for now, it is not decoded yet. And you have, let's see, corners. Yeah, X, Y. Awesome, cool. Uh, this is relative. Okay, this is a zero, number from zero to one relative to screen coordinates, I would say. Or is it, I don't know. Yeah, probably, I would say screen coordinates. Oh no, it is not screen coordinates. Hey Tom, how are you? Um, whatever, yeah, we have the objects here. Cool, nice. Nice shit. So now we need to call the event and maybe also let's, let's connect the input props for now. 
um, we're going to like all props in react native we're going to add it to not camera bridge sorry camera manager dot m sorry i lied camera manager dot swift sorry i lied again camera view manager um and then we're going to call it technically it isn't an event so i wouldn't call it like on code scanned because there's just much more to it and it is also one like explicit output so this is by the way the reason i didn't call it like you know uh where's the props i didn't call it on code scanned but rather like code scanner because it is a bit more than just a you know just a simple event it is actually attaching an output and you have more options here and everything so i think you know it shouldn't technically go under events but more like use cases you know or outputs export view property code scanner and this is an ns dictionary and then in camera view <coughs> <coughs> Code scanner and a dictionary, um, and it's a nullable. Yeah, it's nullable. So we also need a converter for this on the native side. I would write a quick converter. Types, you know, just to type it properly. Code scanner dot swift, and then should it be an enum? No, it should be a class code scanner. And then in it from dictionary or from from JS value dictionary, and then we have like dictionary. Then we need, then we need to just basically read the values from the dictionary. Let's make this. How do I? Ah, oh, there we go. Mm. Can you guys read this? It's like really small. I can't. I can't even read it. Oh, there we go. Can you guys read this? So we have a let code types is dictionary code types. And then we also have a on code scanned. Yeah, we also need the event here. Let's actually make this a bit smaller. So we also have let interval maybe what type is interval actually yeah it's any okay um, so uh, we also need to add the extension functions for this so um, code types these code types here should be mapped to the native av capture metadata code type i think so we need var code types, AV cap, import AV foundation, AV capture or AV metadata type. Ah, what was it called? There we go. This one, an array, okay. And then we also have, I think this can be a let. And then, so this is a required variable. Uh, if let else, how do we throw here? Throw camera error, and then okay, sorry, and then parameter invalid provided missing. Is that what we want? Invalid combination if blah is provided, missing also has to be set. Yeah, we can use that. Uh, code scanner missing code types. Yeah, and then we need to mark this as throws. Cool. And now this code types is av capture av meta lots of object object type. And then, how did I do this before? In, was it in parsers? Yeah, probably here, right? Um, 
This is how I did it previously. That's I think that's bad to be honest. Okay. Ah oh, shit. How does it? What is it called? AV metadata object dot object type. <laughs> it's a long name. Um, AV metadata object dot object type plus. I don't know. Descriptor. Import AV foundation. AV, AV metadata object dot object type. And then in it with string. Yes, and then just do like QR self equals QR. Yeah, we need to hard code like uh, those bindings because you know there's no way to convert from a TypeScript enum to this specific um, Swift type. Uh, yeah, because it's just you know you need to write the bindings for this somehow. I have no idea what a barcode type is let's just add this here we'll you know do the exact implementation later but yeah default we'll just throw an invalid value here and then we need to this this needs to be an array so is it an ns array or an, let's see i think it can be a, i think i can cast like this i don't know if i can do that yeah i think i can code types and then we map it and then here's the cool part we can do av uh, sorry meta dot object dot object type and then in it with string and then do like a backslash dot oh sorry oh i can't do backslash oh shit i can't do this here because it's directly the value oh no okay map transform it like this value. This is also a bit ugly. No, I think I could do like percent zero, right? Oh, sorry, I mean dollar zero? No, okay. Whatever, map. Please keep it similar in the chat. <laughs> uh, yeah. How do you? Um, code apps is a lead consent. It can be changed. Oh, I'm an idiot. No, oh, holy shit, what did I do? Okay. <laughs> um, yes, so... Can I just do try here? Uh, because this is a lambda, I can't really... Never mind. Okay, cool. Um, so we now parse the JS or TS types to whatever this is. And then we need to write some more bindings for this because we only have, where is it? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Where did you go? There we go. Uh, we only have QR and, and this one, which I'm not going to pronounce. Um, so we need to add some other bindings later. Um, and then this can be optional. So we can do if let interval, we by default, let's just use interval, like, I don't know. This need to be a interval. Let's say it's by default, it's 300. I could also just do self. Oh a bit simpler um, yeah I could also do this in one line but I think that's just a bit cleaner or a bit more expressive you know um, and then we also have the callback function which let's see in this case yeah here's the tricky part we need to pass a callback as like one one property to the camera and then the rest as like a separate property. Uh, that's a bit annoying, but it is just how native modules work because the callback is not just like any value in the dictionary here, 
but instead it's like um, it's like a special event, you know, that gets debounced through the bridge. So it's a bit, bit, you know, a bit annoying to set up. But yeah, anyways, we also have a rect of interest. Let's set that up as well. Um, I have no idea what the type of the rect of interest is. Did we set that already? Rect. A CG rect. Okay. Uh, so we do have rect of. Do we want to call it rect of interest or area of interest? What do you want to say? Uh, area of interest, rect of interest. Mm. Flick and swift. Um, okay, whatever. Let's call it rect of interest. Area of interest. Rect of interest. I don't know. EN yeah, 13. Yeah, I can do that in a second. Uh, actually, I can do that now. Rect and size, error is more understandable maybe, but I say rect, okay. Rect of interest, and then this is another dictionary. Can we actually cast that to an int? I think, I think this is actually an, a double instead of an int. That this gets used to draw a frame away and fill the line of the code. Huh? What? I think that this gets used to draw a. There's like a heart emoji over your comment. I can't really read it. Frame away to help people. Yeah, okay. Region of interest. Yeah, that's also good. Let's call it region of interest. Region of interest. Cool. So let region of interest is CG rect. And then we can just do, if it's not set, it's just not an interval. How can you, can you actually specify an interval? Ah, whatever. Um, region of interest is going to be CG rect with these coordinates. So we need let x is region of interest x as double and then do the same thing for all four y with height height with and y x y with and height and i think cg float no it's not a double hmm, yeah Row camera error dot parameter and then we just pass it like this, I guess. Oh no, we can't do that. Come on. Oh shit. Okay. We need to do it a bit differently. We need to do a guard again and then do this. Oops. And if none of one of these variables is wrong, we just throw a camera error here and we pass we need it to be a string. No description. Whatever, let's do a description. Um, cool. Return from initializer without initializing all stored properties. Oh, okay, yeah, this can be null. Okay. You happy? No? Okay. Otherwise, it's nil. Okay, cool. Um, so now that we have that, we can run pod install again. 
uh, example iOS pod install. It's called frame in or in camera kit. Hmm. I, I think frame is the wrong, wrong wording for this, to be honest. I think region of interest is actually really good. Um, okay, we added that. Do, 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 do. And now we need to, yeah, now we need to add the, the events. So we have code scanner. I guess this should be code scanner options. Let's make this a separate thing to be honest. Code scanner. We have code scanner options and on code scanned, which are like two separate parameters. Um, and I think code scanner options. Yeah, let's just call it you know code scanner options. Um, and then our on code scanned is an RCT direct event block. This is like the native, you know, event binding that we can, um, or that I guess React Native sets up for us. So we can just call this function and it just calls the JavaScript function, goes, you know, through the bridge and everything. So this is, you know, it's not as fast as a frame processor, but it's good enough if you just want to detect barcodes. Um, so what we want to do is we want to require device reconfiguration. No, we just want to do like a, why is it, huh? okay, whatever, code scanner options and on code scanned. Do we need to, no, we just want to re, you know, we can have on code scanned, not reconfigure the session. So that's also one good thing. If we just memoize code scanner options, which is just code types and region of interest and interval, if we just memoize that, then you know it will only reconfigure the session if you if we if you actually change that. Um, but this function can actually change an identity, so you can actually you know use state variables or something in there without re-triggering the session configuration. So that's you know really important that we avoid session reconfiguration. Um, but we do have code scanner options and if code scanner options changes, we want to, I wonder if I can actually embed it in an NS dictionary, but I don't think I can. Uh, if code scanner options changes, we want to reconfigure the session. So if should reconfigure is going to be called, should configure a capture session, right? So we're going to call this and then if we can now use if code scanner options. We can create a code scanner actually, or no, let's call it code scanner options, and then let code scanner equal code scanner from JS value code scanner options. Need to catch any errors here. Are we doing that? No, we are not. <sighs> okay, let me do this a bit differently, I guess. We do let code scanner equals try. Try code scanner, code scanner options. And then if it fails to init, we just do um, invoke on error and return. Mm, we do like parameter, whatever. If you really can't use this code scanner, we're going to, can we catch that error? No. Can we catch that error? Yeah, we can. But it's not going to be a camera error. Whatever, we're just going to do like an invalid code scanner and receive value is going to be code scanner options that description again. We're just going to say it was invalid if, it, if we can't cast it or if we can't actually, you know, parse it. Um, Okay, now we have a code scanner instance, which is just this configuration object that we created previously. Uh, now we wanna we wanna add that, and we wanna do code scanner code types. We also wanna make sure that all available types are actually supported. So we wanna do guard code scanner dot code types all satisfy. Uh, 
that the metadata output dot available shit available metadata object types um, contains this code type and if it does not contain that code type then we're going to throw another error and we're going to actually create a new error for this uh, we're going to call it do we just want to swallow the error no we don't want to we just want to throw the error so we want to do a camera error parameter device format session i think case code not supported uh, case code not supported we're going to say code not supported Given code. Actually, we also we also want to log the specific type. So we want to do code not supported code. Uh, what was it called? AV. Oh, it's gonna be a string. We're gonna parse it beforehand. The code. Yes, is not supported by the camera. This is a bit, you know, annoying if this error is ever occurring because, you know, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> if a QR code scanner is not supported, it's just going to throw an error. Um, but I, I don't think that this is actually something that's happening. I don't think that this is going to throw it in any scenario, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I can already see the issues piling up about this. Uh, so we're going to do session code not supported and the code is going to be uh, okay we need to do this a bit different again for re or actually can you do a for loop actually in Swift I think you can yeah of course you can code type in code scanner types nice um, if metadata output available in objects blah, blah blah contains code type, if it does not contain it actually, then we're going to throw the error and we're going to also need to cast it to a string here. Right. And this is this does not exist yet. So what we want to do is we want to create that. in here so we need the same descriptor as we also have i think here yeah so we want to do basically the reverse of what we have now um we want to do qr return qr in this case return this and in this case return this unknown yeah and then it's going to call it default or actually let's create all cases huh no i don't want to add a default class can we not add all other types okay whatever um unknown value default to do and other types here same for here oh sorry it's descriptor not description cool so now we made it pretty safe um i think i guess um so okay we use the video queue is that smart yeah it is smart um, and now we use this yeah these types and the rect of interest could be code scanner dot region of interest so okay we need to explicitly cast that again Re rect of interest is this then Yeah. 
I don't think you can actually set the interval here. So maybe this should be removed. I don't know, whatever. I mean, we can debounce it on our end. Should be enough. Sorry, one more. Cool. Um, and now we need to call the event. So once you add a code scanner, this code runs um, with the given uh, input types. And we also need to call on, actually, we can just copy this final func. Yeah, no, we don't need to do that. We can call it here. So we can have if let on code scanned and then we call it. Maybe we need to add a, like a specific, like a new camera error here. You know, maybe we need to add like code scanner slash not supported code scanner slash function not passed, whatever. But for now, let's call it. How does one code look? Okay, we have a type. It's a, okay, let's objects, auto objects map. We want to return the type object dot do, 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 do. type descriptor. Perfect. And then also the frame. Oh, now we use frame. I don't know if frame is a good idea. Is frame a good idea? I don't know. Just want to use it frame. Yeah, let's just call it frame. Object dot bounds. Maybe bounds is good. And we have origin x and origin y, classic UI kit. And then we also have size, width, size, height. Amazing. And now we are going to call it with all, we want to call it, uh, do we want to wrap it in another object? No, I don't think we want to. I think this is just unnecessary overhead. No, actually, let's do it. Cool. So now, call JS event. So now this should be called on our JavaScript side, I think. Let's run this. Oh yeah, we need to use, let's use QR. And then this should be ideally called in the console, but we'll see. Actually, no, it will not be called um, because we are not passing it here, called scanner. So we have on code scanned and we have code scanner options. Okay, on code scan is going to be. Wait, what? On initialized. Okay. How does the native event type work again? Um, we have on view ready, on error. Let's take a look. Native synthetic event. And then the event looks like this cool. Interface on code scanned event. It's going to look like this. Um, was the stream the Android part also? Yes, 
first iOS, then Android. Um, Wait, how do I actually call on error? Oh, I use this uh, props, right? On uh, no code scanner. If code scanner is no, we do a console.warn. Code scanner is no, but on code scan was triggered. I don't know how this could happen, but it happened. We just want to ignore it. We can just ignore it actually. Okay, so code scanner dot on code scanned will be called with. Oh, this could actually be called with more than one codes, or should it be called once per code? Yeah, it can detect multiple codes, right? Okay, then let's do codes here. And we have event dot native event dot codes. Right. Right. Now we also need to add it here on code scanned on code scanned event. And we also need to remove code scanner here and add code scanner options here. So the reason we do all of this is because we wanna, we don't wanna pass this object directly to, to the native site because this needs to be extracted first, since you know we don't want the user to receive a native event and everything. We want it to be nicely abstracted, so we, you know, catch the event first here, and then call the code scanner. Um, code scanned yeah whatever we can just I think we can just pass we should probably be able to just pass it directly honestly so I think we can pass oh, never mind code scanner we have code code scanner options is code scanner why does this not, ah, whoops. Code scanner options can be no. Cool, and now we pass the code scanner. Um, let's restart the app. And this should be called now. This function here. Not sure how often it will be called. Maybe it will be like, you know, completely spammed. Okay, so it still initializes. Can I read property code scanner of undefined? Let's see. Why am I this dot props dot? Oh, okay, so cool thing about JavaScript. This is actually not this, but instead it's whatever the colors this was. So we need to bind the function on code scanned, bind it to this, and now we need to reload the app, which will probably crash. It does not crash, amazing. Let's see what happens. Undefined. That's new. <laughs> Um, what are we actually, let's try to catch this here. Come on. Okay. We have, w yeah, we have one value in here. For some reason, this does not get passed along. We are using we're definitely calling it, but there it just does not log the code. Oh. Oh. Um. Oh, never mind. I think that should work. Oh, 
doesn't not work. We should probably just stringify this native event. Oh, is it even called codes? Oh, it's called objects. Ha, oh, I'm an idiot. Um, should it be called objects or codes? I think it should be called codes. Yeah. So this is just, yeah, codes with the type of type frame. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Right. Uh, let's try to rerun it and see what happens. Nice. QR code scanned. Um, we even have the, like, you know, bounce on screen. And you can detect multiple barcodes as well. So yeah, this is amazing. Make the webcam larger. <laughs> you guys want to see me instead of the code? Um, okay, let's make the webcam larger. Like this? Okay. <laughs> okay, can you guys see the code? I'm just gonna put it here and then, yeah, I think that's that's probably fine, right? Sheesh. Okay. Um, can I switch webcam and code? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> um, okay. So now we need to um, actually decode the code. Mm, what we want to do is maybe we can have value or a string or whatever. And then we have, I think description is what we want, right? No. Duration, time, type. I think description is what we want. We can just try it, just run it and see what happens. So much better, thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's make this bigger again. Much beauty. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, let's see what happens if it decodes the the object. <clears throat> um, this is not what we want, actually. Yeah, no, this is not what we want. Okay, let's, for the first time in the stream, actually take a look at an example. Why is there a random wire? <laughs> so um, I had this light bulb for like, I don't know, ever since it, I moved in here, this light bulb was here. So I think two years ago and I just, you know, placed a TV here and I was like, okay, light bulb has to go at some point. Um, and I'm going to put like LED things, lights here, you know, RGB, colorable, whatever. Um, but yeah, I never had the time to do that and I'm pretty lazy. So I just, it's still there. It's still a random light bulb and I don't know. It looks artsy. It's the interior design I chose. Um, but yeah, too much vision camera. Stream got interesting for a second. <laughs> didn't they install the right? Yeah, I didn't install the light properly. Ben, come over, install it yourself. Um, how do I decode? This fucking code. Du, 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 du. There needs to be some example on this, no? Is there no example on how to use this? Why is there no example? Do 
Do I need to cast it? Maybe I need to cast it actually. Um, maybe I need to cast it if object is a v metadata object metadata body object salient dog human body machine readable code object aha uh -huh. okay so we need to do if let or if can we do this object no we can't okay i thought swift would be really cool but whatever if let code is object as you know this is a try cast in swift um okay what do we want to do if it cannot if it is not a machine readable code i guess we just don't have a value right or do we want it to be non-nullable i don't know hmm. let's see i think it's annoying okay let's quickly think about this i think it's annoying if you receive codes here and you want to do like const code get the first code and then you know hold on sorry value string and then you do code dot value you want to just you know use the value here and just and and it might be null you know that's i guess annoying leave it out yeah or actually hmm. i think i'm gonna leave it in to be honest i think i'm going to call this value string and it might be no and then value is code dot string value there we go awesome because it's also nullable here so i guess it makes sense to call it uh, why is it why do I need to cast it as any okay whatever okay and now we have a value as well cool so if we run this now um, let's see code scanner options I think this is, I'm pretty confident this is the final implementation for iOS. Let's run it. Good vibes, yes. Okay. Uh, awesome. Value is Wikipedia. 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 Yeah, nice. So I think if we can create a QR code, let's try creating a QR code without selling your soul to some website. This one should be fine, right? Let's do link yeah download png why do you need an account oh my god okay whatever i think that should work yeah awesome value m osavi.com nice so we got the string representation working as well so you have a frame how could it be a qr with a nil value i don't know Maybe the QR value can just not be decoded or it's a different type of value. Um, or maybe it does not have a string representation, you know, maybe it's a, maybe, is there a binary as well? Code dot. Value. No, there's only string value. I don't know why it can be null to be honest. Returns nil if a string representation, yeah, cannot be extracted. Wow. Okay, very much information, thank you. Yeah, but maybe, you know, it's a QR code, like an invalid QR code or something, and it just cannot extract the string for whatever, you know, God knows why. But it's, yeah, it's just nillable, nullable, nillable, whatever. Um, cool, so iOS works. Um, I think we want to maybe do some a little bit of cleanup here so first of all 
I hate nesting too much. Um, so we're going to do like guard instead of uh, instead of an if because it just nests, you know, it doesn't nest or it doesn't indent, I guess. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. I think we can just return here. And then, yeah, we map the codes. That's also fine. And then we call the JS event map codes to JS values. Just some comments there, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. And then I think we had some to do somewhere. Where was the to do? Yeah, do we want to create separate? error codes for, um, for, 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 for code scanners? Or do you think it's it's fine if that's just, maybe it's in capture? No. Session? I don't know. I think we want to create separate codes, right? Export type code scanner error. Then we have like code scanner. No, I don't think we need that to be honest. Do we need that? Uh, what can actually go wrong? Code not supported. Null value error. <laughs> you want it, you want it to throw an error if there's no string representation or what do you mean? Please no hard emojis before marriage. Um, um, interval, yeah, we don't have an interval yet. Mm, we can just introduce that somewhere else, I guess, but yeah, doesn't really matter. Um, don't want to throw here. We <laughs> no value error. Yeah, I don't know if spec allows for null actually. I don't know either. I mean, it's I'm just using the APIs, so I don't know if that works or not. Yeah, we also need to add the other types, but we can just, you know, that's just, we can leave that out for now. So, and then what we need to do if we create a PR, actually, let's create a PR. Codes, code scanner API from YouTube stream. Without from YouTube stream, from YouTube stream. Um, what we need to do is we're going to use guard here and then use um, then format everything. So we're going to run this and then prefer for where violation where over a single if inside of a four. Yeah, I think we need to use a for a where clause instead of this for. But how do we actually return here? Where, where does a return actually go if it's, no, that's a lambda, so it doesn't return. I don't know. I think I'll just leave it at this, to be honest. Okay, format. Oops, I did, I had some wrong formatting on main actually. That's my bad. How could how could this land on main? Whatever. Mm. Yeah, we need more explicit errors at some point later. Whatever. For so let's implement Android now. iOS is working perfectly. Um, we want the same API on Android. So we need to actually let's check the Twitter polls um, because I asked which code scanner is more is better. I guess. Um, MLKit vision. Everybody said MLKit vision. Okay. Let's do MLKit vision. MLKit vision. By the way, I've never used the code scanner APIs before, so this is the first time for me using those APIs. You're gonna implement Android. Yes, I am going to implement Android. I'm, yeah. Long stream incoming. <laughs> yeah. This is probably we're at one and a half hours for iOS and JavaScript or TypeScript APIs. So hopefully Android should be done in 30 minutes, ideally. Then we have two hours, which is exactly what I thought, how long this is going to take. Um, 
but we'll see you know android is always very interesting let's say like this uh where is it barcode scanning android i think barcode scanning is barcode scanning yeah okay awesome they have pretty much the same codes as ios so okay here's the fun part on ios this is integrated into like the native platform on android you actually you know, that's why I checked the Twitter poll. There's multiple solutions for this. There's MLKit Vision, and then there's also Zebra Crossing or Z Xing, whatever, um, which is this right here. Zebra Crossing barcode scanning library for Java and Android. Um, and this is really small. So I think this is like at 400 kilobytes or something, which, which is fine in my opinion to include in a camera app. Um, but the ML kit started implementing in Rust. You're insane, man. <laughs> um, but on Android or the ML kit version actually has a 2.4 megabyte size increase, um, which is insane if you ask me. This is a barcode scanner and it's 2.4 megabytes. Uh, but what you can do actually is if you don't bundle the model, um, then you only have a two kilo, 200 kilobyte size increase and the model has to be downloaded dynamically through i don't know i guess google play i don't know how that works um so either you add it to your android manifest file which is i think fine if we tell users to do that um we need to you know add some special handlings for for expo people because expo people are afraid of touching native code um so yeah and then also there's an like an imperative API to check this, but uh, yeah, I think we can also do that. So what we wanna do is we wanna use the unbundled version, which is just the code for the QR code scanner, but not the QR code scanner ML model itself. Um, and then we want to dynamically, you know, when the user enables the, car the QR code scanner, we wanna um, check if the model is downloaded. If not, you need to do an additional, or the user of your app needs to do an additional quick download of the model, which is 2.4 megabytes or 2.2 megabytes, I guess. Um, and ideally, if he already used a QR uh, barcode scanner previously, it should already be there like instantly, you know, because it's the same model as far as I understand this. Um, so we're going to create, we don't do any C++ today. Nice. Um, we're going to do build.gradle. This is the vision camera build uh, setup. It's, by the way, I don't know if you've guys seen this, but I just landed a commit on main, um, which sets the min SDK version to 23 again. So you don't need to be on 26. You just need to be on 26 if you use frame dot to array buffer. So this function right here, to array buffer. If you use this function, you need to be, use min SDK version 26. Otherwise, you know, hardware buffers are just not available. And it needs to be min SDK because, um, you know, in C++ it links against the min SDK version, not the target SDK version. So yeah, your min SDK version is actually the version of your native code. So if you increase that to 26, you can now use hardware buffers, regardless of your users, um, or regardless if your user is using Android, like, you know, 33, the latest, or if he's on 26, uh, only these APIs are, are actually available. Um, yes, so, it's already packed inside Android by default. No, it's not directly packed inside Android. It's only in. It's only downloaded from Google Play dynamically. Who wants some JSI? <laughs> um, you're gonna do a. You should do a Rust and JSI stream, Rodrigo. Uh, okay, so we need to add the dependency here. And it looks like this is the, na the latest version. Let's sync. Um, boom, boom, boom. Actually, we can close this. And then if you choose blah, 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 you can configure your app to automatically download the model. Yeah, I think we're going to use the imperative API to be honest, but we'll see. And then, yeah, we're just going to add it. So 
So on Android, um, the difference between iOS and Android when it comes to native views is that we don't have this, you know, remember the, na the, the list of all, oh wow, this looks pretty cool, um, of all props for the function, camera view manager, this one. So we don't really have that on Android. Instead, you have to create the, those bindings like completely manually, which kind of sucks, but it's it's better in the Turbo Modules API. Um, but for now, we need to, you know, go into the view manager. As you can see here, we're setting each prop indivi individually. Um, this is a bit annoying, but it is what it is. And you also don't have any callbacks here. Those are instead, you know, export it like this camera code scanned what is a map builder oh never used that that's cool i think this is completely useless i don't think you need to use this at all to be honest Whatever. Um, I think you can just use map off, but okay, whatever. So on code scanned is now an event. Yes. You sure? What's the point of Android devices to come with Google Play services? Uh, I think those devices are fucked. I don't think you can use it to be honest. I'm not sure if it downloads. Yeah, I think this is only works with, with Google Play to be honest. Models are downloaded and managed via Google Play services. Yeah. But I don't, I don't want to include it like statically inside Vision Camera because then everybody, even the people who don't use, you know, QR code scanners need to install the additional or download an additional 2.5 megabytes. I mean, 2.5 megabytes is not a lot, but it's inside your app, right? So your app is getting 2.5 megabytes bigger and it feels unnecessary it would simplify things a lot if you know android had not all android devices come with google play services yeah we can change it later you know let's just use unbundled for now and change it later um i guess we can also add a compile option if you really want to include it but i mean you know it's hard for me to can it be a build.gradle option? Yes, it can. I can make it a build.gradle option. Um, what? Okay, where were we? Um, yeah, React. We're going to add a new React prop. We're going to call it um, code scanner options. Fun set code scanner. Code scanner options readable. It's a readable map on Android. And, and now we need to do the same thing on Android. We're going to create a parser. Code scanner options. No. Just code scanner. Don't ask again. Code scanner. And then initialize it with a Um, yeah, with a map. And then we have, you know, code types. I don't know what a code type is. I have a feeling that this is going to be our code an int. Yes. <laughs> ah. Why do they not use enums? I don't get it. Why is everything an int? on Android code types int, which is untyped now. Wait, how do you do arrays again? Um, how do you do int arrays again in Kotlin? Is it just array? Yeah, okay. And then we're going to do map.get array 
prototypes. Can this be null? No. Yeah, list of int would be an initializer already. So I don't think we need that. We're just declaring the type here. Um, and then we need to loop. Ah, oh, this can actually be null. So to array list. And then if this is null, we're going to throw. Can we throw in here? Yeah. Invalid TypeScript union error. And the union name is code types. Union value is, I don't know what. Code scanner. Okay, whatever. Yeah, this is how Kotlin wants it to be written, which is really ugly, but this is just how it is, whatever. And then we have this dot code types equals code types dot map. And now we want to parse this. So we're going to do like return, re yeah, return map. It's a bit ugly, I don't know, but whatever. Why does this not work? List, okay, it will be a list, whatever. And then it is any, whatever, return when it has string. Can you actually cast strings like this? A string, whatever. Okay, so when this is a QR, we're going to return barcode.qr code, format QR code, sorry. And then when this is this, we're going to do barcode.this. And then also the last one was, what was the last one again? This one. Awesome. private yeah I don't know cool okay um, wait what was ah region of interest and I I think you know Android as cool as it is they probably don't have that option let's check set barcode formats you have an enable all option and zoom suggestion. Yeah, cool. They don't have that. Whatever. Then this is just really simple on Android. Um, this can be private. Now we have a code scanner. Code scanner. Code scanner options. If yeah, we also need a com comparator function override equals return other if other is code scanner. Oh, actually, let's do it like this if other not is code scanner return false, otherwise, do return other dot code times dot all. Can you do equals with a list? I think this just checks for reference equality, to be honest. What we can do, though, is we do if the size 
equals coach types and if it contains all contains our other code types and we need to include hash code as well awesome now we can compare that if new code scanner options uh, oh, sorry if view dot code scanner options is not the same as new code scanner options then add it to the transaction code scan scanner options is new code scanner options amazing now we need to add that code scanner code scanner is null by default and the the event is already magically there i think how does it work on android again yeah um okay now we need to invoke the event as well let's try to codes and then one code would be how do you detect codes there let's see build yeah and then image process the image barcodes i don't know what a barcode is is it just a barcode It might be just a barcode. Yes, it is just a barcode. Amazing. So now we do val, val codes is arguments. How is it being a CEO at your, what is, what, there's a heart in the way, at your early 20s? Um, it's amazing. Um, it's really amazing. It's really cool. I like what I do. Um, we have cool projects, cool clients, and I, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, okay, so codes, or codes. So let's call it, or actually, yeah, let's call it codes, and this is barcodes. I don't know why they called it barcode, because it is not a barcode, it is a code. Ah, whoops, this needs to be an array. I wonder if this is an array here as well. They don't put the type here. Ah, list, there we go. Okay, and then we do barcodes dot for each. Yeah, this is a bit more annoying on Android than it is on iOS because on iOS you can just do like var code equals you know type blah 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 but here you have to do arguments dot create map and then do it like you know um, manually I guess put um, string for example we can do type and do bar code sorry bar code dot probably like format I don't know driver license, email, phone, raw bytes, value type, probably? No. Format? I don't know. Maybe format, actually. I think it's format. I think it is format, but we need another, another barcode format or code type. Let's call it code type, that's a good idea. Mm. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, it's a Java class. Um, ah, okay. Delete. And uh, Kotlin, sorry. Code type. Yeah. 
Yes, I do have a car. <laughs> do you have a car, Lawrence? Where's your BMW? Where's your i8? We have QR, that's sick, and then QR, that's sick, N13, and then we have from barcode type, and then barcode type is amazingly untyped because that's how Android or Google design this decides to design their APIs. Barcode dot format format QR for example we can do oh, sorry we can do QR and then in here we have else throw not implemented error to do implement other QR types so next thing we have format yeah this one and then EIM thirteen EAN13. Nice. From barcode type, from blah blah blah. Now we also need to add a from string function, I think. Let's see. Yeah, this one. We need to do from union value code type. I don't know why, I, like, I, I need to find a way to you know, automatically generate that. I'm not sure if it makes sense to be honest because hang an object. Ah, oh, whoops. I'm not sure if it makes sense because turbo modules can already do that. What I'm doing right now, I think. Um, but you know, I don't want to make it turbo modules only. Um, and now we're just going to stringify it. So we're going to do well, type is barcode or I guess code type from barcode type. So barcode dot format, I think is what we want. And then type union value. Cool. This is the type. And we also have a value. What was it called again? Yeah, value, which is um, barcode dots, I think display value, right? Or raw value. I don't know what the difference is. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Where's the barcode? Where's the barcode type? Can we just read the code? Give me the code. Yeah, I think raw value is what we want, to be honest. What is a barcode type Wi Fi? Oh, you can read Wi Fi passwords like this. Oh, there's a barcode object. Raw data encoded by the barcode. Also, blah, 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 blah. You can containing parse data. Amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, hello, Tobias. Tobias. Tobias, can I call you on FaceTime? Do you also want to be part of this? Um, okay, value and then well, frame arguments that create map. Um, we also have code put map frame 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 and then the x value would be bounding box okay well frame dot ah fuck bound 
something. This is really ugly in Kotlin, and I don't, I've never seen a really perfect solution for this, but yeah, this is what it is. I don't think this should be optional, to be honest, but yeah, apparently it is optional on iOS now, on Android now. Um, okay, so X, Y, is Y top on iOS? We need to check that. And then with would be rec dot right minus rec dot left, right? Yeah, I think I don't know. And then height would be rec dot bottom minus rec dot top. Now we have a frame, and now we have we do we push it in there. Push no put map. No, sorry, push map. And then code. And now we're just going to pass it to JavaScript like this. Um, put map, no, put array. Amazing. Amazing. Camera code detected. Cool. So we set it up here. Or we set up the bindings, I guess. Now we need to add it to the session. We're going to use, yeah, we're going to add it here. Code scanner options. Do we have code scanner options? Yes, we have code scanner options. We're going to set configure capture session. So this is where it gets interesting. Mm, we are going to need to add another output here, I think. Yeah, so data class, um, let's call it code scanner output. I don't know what target size we want to use. I mean, it should be really small, right? Um, somewhere camera outputs photo video code scanner okay and We're going to use uh, image reader for this again because image reader is the way to get CPU access to the frame on Android. Um, code scanner output. I don't know why I'm using, like, why I'm doing that, but we'll figure it out in a second. Um, and then this dot this dot code scanner. Okay, then we're going to compare for identity and then result plus equals code scanner hash code. Code scanner output dot close. Output. We didn't overwrite to string yet, so we also need to do that. And then if code scanner is not null, we're going to add the code scanner. This is the same as on iOS now. We have multiple outputs. We have the preview output, which is just a surface. We have the photo output, which is an image reader requesting images on demand. Um, and then for video, we have our own custom video pipeline that we're all familiar with. <laughs> um, it's the OpenGL 
you know, thingy. Actually, this is only available on API level 26. I think I lied before. You can't use API level 26. Um, oh, sorry, API level 23 or above. There's a fly. Okay. Um, we're going to use video oh no, code scanner output is a new code scanner output with the target size. This is where it gets interesting. Um, what is the actual size that we want to use? Don't capture input at the camera's native resolution, blah, blah, blah. Instead, only request the size that is required for barcode detection, which is no more than two megapixels. Two megapixels is, I think, what is two megapixels? 720, no. This is two megapixels. Um, I think it needs format YUV, right? Let's see. Yeah. So let's get all video sizes. Or no, actually, let's do closest to. I think the size we want to use is. What do we want to use? 1080p or 720p? I think 720p is fine, probably. I wonder what they use on iOS, to be honest. But they abstract it all away. Code scanner. Why does it not work? Oh yeah, it needs to be an image reader output. My bad. Very good. For let's do size dot width, size dot height, seven twenty b. Yes, this code looks easy. Yes, it is very easy. What's your Insta? I don't have Insta. Um, 144p, all right. Um, or let's do, actually, no, format, image format at YUV. I only have Tumblr and Club Penguin. You can add me on Club Penguin if you want. Um, what's the maximum buffer? Let's do three. Uh, image reader dot set Listener. Can I also have your OnlyFans? Uh, I don't have an OnlyFans yet, um, but maybe I could do some ASMR on OnlyFans. You know, some some um, like raging on Android APIs or something like that. You know, would be pretty cool. Mm. Acquire latest image, otherwise return. And now we also need to actually create a code scanner. Good thing you remind me, thank you. Um, let's do... <laughs> Yet, yeah. <laughs> you know, you need, to be, you need to be moving fast in this modern world, so I don't know. <clears throat> I could do ASMR coding. Hello. Um, barcode scanning dot get client. Ah, oh, we also have options. Okay, scan barcode scanning dot get client. Barcode scanner options dot builder. And now we can do set barcode formats. Oh no, it's var arguments. Oh shit, this is a terrible API. Code scanner. Can I do, how do you do var args? Kotlin expand var args. Why can't we use photo resolution max? Um, because because this would be really, really large and will take really long to process and you don't need that maximum 
photo resolution um, for barcode detection actually. High res, yeah, high res cameras have bad performance, so you need to choose a lower resolution. This is also what iOS does actually. Um, oh, you can do it with a star. I don't, why? Why does this not work? To array. <laughs> that's that's gotta be wrong. It is actually how you use this API. How the fuck, why the fuck did they? That's so stupid, look at this. You have format and more formats. <laughs> Who the fuck? <laughs> Who the fuck creates an API like this? Why is it not formats as a string as an array? It is format and more formats. This is like uh, that's absolutely amazing. It's just a bit mask. Yeah, no, let's not do any ugly programming here. We're going to Oh, this is annoying again. Okay, so we're going to do types. You know, the first type and then more types. Default plus accepted. I don't know. I don't know either. I think it's a terrible API, to be honest. I think you should just pass in a one list. But, you know, I'm a bit centered. How long is your left arm? Mm, I'd say, I don't know. Maybe, maybe 50 centimeters. I don't know. Actually, maybe. Is it 50? 10? Is that 10? 10? 20? 30? 40? Yeah, maybe 50. Maybe 50 is a good guess. How long is an arm? Not AR, no, go away. Arm. No, okay, that's a terrible guess. It's, yeah, 50 centimeter would be, I don't know. Right arm in man range from 26. 39 centimeters. I don't know. Okay. Set barcode formats, set zoom suggestion, executor, I don't know, camera cues dot, let's use the video cue for this. And then build. Process, no, process, input image. Well, input image is input image. Yes, input image from media image and rotation degrees. Ah, shit. the elaborate answer yes thank you are we going through all the different sizes in your stream yeah share like how long is your arm actually can you maybe share your arm length in chat Success. How do you do that? Add on success. On success listener. About 80 centimeters. That's crazy, man. That's a really, really long arm. 
How do you, how do you have 80 centimeters arms? It's crazy. That's like, it's like two full arms, maybe three. Add on failure listener. Yeah, we can use fancy Kotlin APIs. So what we're going to do is on Oh shit. We don't have an error event here. What the fuck is callback? Oh, that's photo captured callback. Shit. That's not good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We need a way to 80 centimeters just a forearm. That's amazing. We need to send that event somehow to JavaScript. Right now we're just throwing it and we're crashing the application. Um, but yes, and then to do send event to JS. Now we need to, yeah, we also can't do that here. But we're going to just log it for now. So we're going to do codes is barcodes dot join to string actually no let's do barcodes so for each and then do a log in there it dot can I just write a converter for that or am I tripping am I completely tripping right now code type Oh no, I just wrote code type, okay. Raw, raw value again, okay. So we're just going to log it. And then this is going to be an image reader output. But I don't think this should be an image reader output actually. This should, no, this should be a code scanner output. Um, which is which extends image reader output actually uh, let's see image reader and output type is going to be video and then also we need the pretty private question 77 centimeters that's crazy man that's the arab genes um code scanner out ah oh, fuck i have two different code scanner outputs now that's not good that's not good yeah i have code scanner output and video output Um, I need to call this maybe won't have in high resolution make preview image frame much sharper leading to better chance of scanning even from distance um, yes the preview itself is going to stay at the same resolution we're going to add another output to the camera which is going to be low resolution um, because QR code scanner and in general like all ML models are trained on a very low re or relatively low resolution um, because the machine can see more than you can see so yeah it's the preview will stay the same and photo or video capture will stay the same but it's just the code scanner just the ml part that is going to be lower resolution um, you don't need high res to detect the qr code right you need like it's probably going to detect even at 480p um, why use Java for this? Um, because the API is in Java. There's no benefit in using C++ because we have to bridge it and use the Java API anyways. So they wrote the API in Java. Um, 
So the reason I'm creating a separate output for this right now is because we also need to close. Actually, do we need to close it? We don't even need to close it. Okay. Let's delete it. So we need an image reader output, which has an image reader in here and an output type of video. Amazing. That's all we need to do. Adding which formats? that an int oh yeah it is an int i don't think this should be an int Code type from union value let's go it is string yes perfect now we don't need to do that um so we have a code type here and yeah, great. We don't have, uh, yeah, this was kind of unnecessary actually, to be honest. What is it? It is a code type. Yeah, this was really unnecessary to be honest, but it's, it's just more type safety. So let's do the same thing again. I'm going to find a way to automatically do all of this. Let's EAN 13. Great. So now map it to, to barcode type. I don't know why this is required to be honest and I don't think we'll see if it works because it has one du duplicate in it and I don't know what happens if you duplicate this do you write unit tests for the lib no nope. <laughs> don't test it I like to be like to be risky um, yeah I don't need the task to be honest Right, so now we're detecting barcodes right here, I think. Let's just try to run it and see what happens. I have a great Huawei phone, which is, it's really good to test things on because it's just a shit phone and it just it's just breaking all the time. So this is like really, really cool. Um, oh, and I spotted something. I'm very, accurate here. Oh, I actually am not very accurate here. This needs to be like this. Great. Um, this can go. Yeah, this can go. Yeah, cool. This is Android base. Android base. And then ADV reverse it. Connect the phone. Can I stream? Do you guys know if I can stream my Android phone somehow to the screen? Otherwise you just you know won't be able to see it. Seems hard part. Yeah, it's, um, oh yeah, whoops. Code scanner. Oh no, camera out, codes dot, huh? 
huh? Oh, current outputs. Dot call scanner. Does that work? Wait, what am I doing actually here? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing to be honest. Um, visor. I can actually take a look at that in a second. Um, how to learn native development when you have first landed on React Native seems hard path to me. Yes, it is a bit tricky, but I mean, it's not insanely difficult. So the, by the way, the camera just started. I need to be really careful because the cable might unplug at any second. Okay. Let's see if it detects anything. Um, where's the console? Where's it? Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. Doesn't look like it's detecting anything, to be honest. Oh, we're not downloading the model right now. So, yeah, let's actually use the one where we embed the model, which is this one. Um, this one, right? Yes. Um, it is a bit tricky to get started with native development. Um, but I mean, you just have to kind of, I guess, dive in it in the or jump in in the water and just do it. Um, I mean, it's not you know, the Android is is it's not that difficult to be honest. It's it depends obviously on what you do. Um, you just need I guess you need a reason to go into native development because you know if you do a React Native app today and you just want to do like I don't know a workout app or something like that, then you can do everything that you want to do in React Native. But you know, for stuff like hardware interrupt, like you know, cameras or stuff like that, you just need to go native because there's no you know current solution that can do this, or the current solutions just suck. So you need to build a better solution, and then you can just do, you know you just have a reason to 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 go into the native side, I guess. Um, okay, so now we include the model. We actually have an error. Okay, let's open logcat again. Um, I'm going to connect the phone in a second. Actually, let me just first see what happens when I do this now. Nothing. Nothing happens. <laughs> Adding native preview output. Um, wait, what? Code scanner options. Hey, Chris, I still owe you a reply on WhatsApp. I'm really sorry for leaving you on red. Um, but yes, I'm live. ADB over Wi Fi and disconnected cable. Can you do that? Device manager, physical, per using Wi Fi, <laughs> QR code. We don't have a scanner yet. Um, okay, I'll do that in a second. I just first want to see. Um, why is it adding the preview output, but not? Props changed. Code scanner options actually did change, but we did not. Did we log something actually? Yes, this implementation does not use frame processors. So you can use this without frame processors or without React Native Worklets Core. It uses a separate output on the camera, um, which means that you cannot use preview, photo, video, and code scanner at the same time. You need to use you need to remove one of them, so either video or photo um, or a code scanner. Um, wait, where? Oh, yeah, we're not passing the code scanner output. So well, code scanner, I have a lot of places where I'm passing this.
target size should be removed. scanner and code scanner why can I not smart cast here how is that impossible it's mutable property that could have changed over time okay mm -hmm. um, we need to use a local variable because um, just some drive-by information um, Java or Kotlin is multi-threaded or can be multi-threaded and code scanner options right here is a member variable of this class and it is a var. Um, the reason why we cannot check for null and immediately use it here is because in this check for null it might not be null but once we try to use it here it might be already null it might already be null again because another thread might change it exactly in this specific point of time so to be safe here we need to cast it, or not, sorry, not cast it. Um, we need to get uh, a local variable here, point it to the member variable, and now we have a strong, like a really strong reference on, <laughs> really strong, ref a strong reference on, on the member var variable, I guess. Um, so now if we run this, and we can now pair using Wi-Fi actually, mm, let's use a QR code scanner. I don't know if the phone actually has a QR code scanner implemented. It does actually not. There's actually no QR code scanner. Oh, sorry, I'm stupid. Developer options. Oh, I think it just crashed. So when I open settings, it asks me to install some Google Play service. This is so... Sorry, I, 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 hate, I hate Android. I'm just not a big Android fan. Um, <laughs> you need some kind of plugin system for vision camera. Oh, that would be amazing. We could call it something like processing frames. Or I don't know if there's a better name for that. Um, wireless debugging. It's really slow. I don't know if it makes sense to... Yeah, settings just crashed. Okay. <laughs> um, we're not going to pair over Wi-Fi. I think cable is better. Okay. <clears throat> is it building? It's not building. Wait, why not? We can't just change code and expect it to work. ADB reverse. Yes, I'm doing ADB reverse. Okay, install. Let's see what happens. I'm going to move that over here. Where's log cut? There we go. And it did nothing. Three outputs. We have a code scanner and we're using code types 256. Does that sound? Um, does it make sense? I don't know. Code scanner output. I got lost in the code. You can get lost in the sauce. Maybe this is actually wrong and maybe we actually need to do barcodes barcode dot format qr code and just see what happens if we do it like this um i mean it didn't even get called here right
Come on, start. Yeah, no. I wonder if it got call gets called here. Oh, I know why. I know why we're not pushing any frames in here. So we have the, the code scanner output, but we are not pushing any frames into this surface. Uh, we need to do that right here. Let's see. This is interesting because we could probably add this to the OpenGL pipeline, but then it would be a bit slower. I think it's it's fine to have a separate. There we go. Outputs dot code scanner output. Not sure if we need to create a capture so the what i'm doing is um uh good night laurits uh office i don't know maybe tomorrow maybe on thursday i think so yeah um just text me um what i'm doing right now is we need to create a camera session if uh, sorry, we need to create a camera session and add the surface of our output, which is an image reader surface to the camera. So the camera streams frames into the surface. Um, and I'm just not sure if we also, no, we're creating it like this. Okay, so I think this should, oh shit, not pause it. Okay, I think this should work now, to be honest. But I also thought it would work three times before, so I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it contains unconfigured. Oh, actually, did, did you guys realize that we? Never mind. I thought we left video on, on iOS. Ah, go away. Okay, so it crashed because apparently the. Apparently the capture request contains unconfigured input output surfaces. Um, and I want to understand why actually we are configuring session, preparing outputs. We have a native preview and a photo output and a 720p code scanner output. And then we have three outputs, right? Creating capture session, preview, photo, video, and we're adding it, adding preview. Adding code scanner and it initialized and then it failed. Why? Wait, did it add a video? No, it's preview and code scanner. So it's two outputs, but for some reason that failed. Oh, hold on, I think. I should be able to add photo preview and code scanner. Let's see. Great capture session. We have outputs here. Oh, -ho! we also need to add it here. I don't know why. I, th I think I could probably simplify this a bit. 
the reason this is so complex is because I always need to pass around this, you know, camera characteristics and camera ID object, um, which on iOS is just a simple object, which is called camera device. So I think I can simplify this by just abstracting it as a camera device. Um, oh yeah, we also need to close the images. Oh, uh, this is stupid. So once we're done using, or I think we can use add or on. What does continue with do actually? We just need to close it. Close the image because Java is a garbage collected language, you need to imperatively close stuff like this, since it cannot just detect when something is unused. Um, okay. Yeah, same story here. I think this should be at acquire next image. Yes. crashes because it takes longer to decode I don't know max image has already been acquired call close before acquiring more um, I think max images should just be one, to be honest. And then we try to get a, a new image. And if we can't get a new image, or if there's some failure, we're just going to catch. What is your caffeine drink of choice? Cocaine. And if we can't catch it here. Failed. Blah. Error. Error to do send error to JS. No, my caffeine drink of choice is I don't know. I just drink coffee, two coffees a day, um, and that's it. What do you drink? Do you drink coffee? Shit! It crashed and I and I just cleared the log cut logs, so I need to run it again. Ah. Why does it crash? Huh? Oh, sorry. I'm not catching the... Or I guess throwable. Um, I don't think this is the right approach, to be honest. I think we should block here and not throw. Or just return if if we're still processing i guess but whatever okay so we're now processing frames and we decode the code this is it so we got qr codes implemented on android as well nice now we just need to send those events to javascript um and also kind of fix what we're doing right now Um, fix attach surfaces. So I don't think this is a good idea. I think we should do usage. No, this is not max images. Uh, 
or maybe just do an is busy call. Maybe that's a good idea. Like is busy false. And then we do is busy true. And is busy false again. Or actually, let's do Oh no, we can't use finally here. Um, and if we are busy, then we return here. And we don't need this right here. And we don't need this right here. I don't. No, no, this should not be an atomic boolean because we can just we only have one queue vision camera dot code scanner code scanner queue amazing oops um yet yeah. okay now. Looks like you're good at native development. You should make some good packages like Rake Native Vision Camera or MMKV. <laughs> yeah, would be a cool idea, yeah. Um, Club Mate, okay. I don't really like Mate, to be honest. Um, I think it tastes like cigarettes. But I've heard it a couple of times that it's, you know, not lots of people drink it. Um, okay, I don't know, what do we do now? We send the event to JavaScript, and then we're basically done. We also need to implement other formats, obviously, and maybe some error handling to just tell the user that, you know, the use cases are exhausted. But yes, use is busy. Or I'm so confident in my code that I don't test it. <laughs> Um, I also need a separate queue on iOS. So we just used the video queue the whole time, but now let's also use a code scanner queue. Serial execution queue for output processing of codes. Code scanner. Okay, um, do we have a queue here? There we go. Code scanner queue. Awesome, cool. Now it's running on a code scanner queue instead of the video queue, so it does not block video recordings if it is scanning barcodes. Fix, use, separate queue. Okay. Um, now for the JS API, maybe we also want to. Oh yeah, errors. Um, do we want separate errors for code scanners? Like code scanner not com or yeah, not compatible with other outputs or outputs not compatible with outputs. Something like. Um, like code type not available or not supported. Okay, then cannot load model. This is when we need to load the model on Android. And are there any other errors? Uh, we do have, we don't have an interval. Let's just remove that. Um, yeah, we cannot add it here. I think that's fine. Um, code not supported. Or oh, yeah, I, oh shit, I need to remove that here. Um, Let's 
string. And then we have, wait, where did I just go? Parameter, invalid combination, no. Device error, no. Format error, no. Code not supported, there we go. Okay, um, wait, which one did we have? Code scanner, not compatible with outputs. And then we also have code type not supported. case we have not compatible with outputs we have not compatible with outputs um, code type not supported code type not supported not supported in com for the new return is swift for invalid codes yeah we need to take a look at that it's not supported in combination with video and photo set to true either disable video or photo outputs And then we do code not supported. We did code type. We had this before. I don't know why I'm retyping the whole thing, but whatever. Code type is not supported by the code scanner. Okay, amazing. That's fine. How is that not a code? Wait, what am I doing? Code scanner error. ID dot message. Cool. So now we added the specific code scanner error type. Um, I think in this case we're parsing fine. I don't want to use a fatal error here. Shit, this is probably not good. Okay, whatever. I think we're we use it a lot. Oh fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. We need better error handling for these cases, but I think it's fine for now. I don't think there's going to be, yeah, this is just unknown default. I think that's fine as long as Apple does not add any, any new formats here. Um, what we do want to use now is code scanner dot not compatible with outputs. And here we have Code scanner, code type not supported. This one. Nice. Okay, so now we have good errors. Right of interest is only available on iOS, whatever. Uh, and this is the code scanner. I don't think we need any error handling here. I mean, you know, it can be nil, that's just how it is. It can fail to decode. It's also nullable on Android. 
so it can also be null on Android. So it is just, you just have to do the null check in JavaScript. Now we can add the other types here. Um, let's actually bring up the Android map. We're, going, we're only going to implement the types that are working on both platforms. So can we use this one? Yes, code 128, okay. So code 128, actually, let's do this a bit smarter. No, <laughs> that was stupid. That. Same thing for eight ITF ITF fourteen. I guess this is what they want. UPC A UPC. There's only UPC E. Is. But yeah. This is only available on iOS 15. Why? Okay, I don't know. Is that, does anyone use this type? What is it even? Huh. Seems like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need this actually. Have not supported. I don't know. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, can I do this in reverse? No. Ah, if unavailable, then we throw otherwise. Ah. Does this work? No. Anyways. Um, yeah, cool. So those are all the types that are supported in the Vision Camera Code Scanner. Um, and we're going to actually import them right here. Do this right here. And then we do... Um, I don't know how I'm going to mess. Yeah, whatever. I don't know what I'm doing actually. My bad. So, code scanner. And then here we now have. Code 128. Code 39. Code 93. Hold up bar and then the others.
Cool. Type of the code to scan, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, scan code. Value is actually nullable and frame is actually also nullable on Android. So yeah, if this is null, I don't know if there's a way to ex to actually access any contents if value is null. So yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. So now we need to implement those codes on Android as well. Oh, actually we also need to, yeah, rewrite them here. Um, how do I do that? I don't know. I think I need to do it actually manually. Maybe I can do a switch, can it auto generate? No. Oh man. Okay, whatever. Can you auto generate now? Ah, oh, whatever. I'll just manually do it. No. Where'd you go? Um. Yes. This one. This one. Bar. Yeah, we're going to need special handling for that in a second. Ah. Data matrix PDF four seventeen. You are UPC. -E. ITF 14. Let's just call the ITF EAN 8 EAN 13. Amazing. And now if so was this. Actually, oops, I removed the, whole, the wrong thing. <laughs> Wait, where was... Yeah, this one needs to go. Add a version check. Awesome. Now default return. No, I don't know. Or do we want to throw here? Or do we also want to have an unknown type, code type or unknown? Yeah, whatever. I hope this becomes a regular thing. Very interesting and enjoyable. Thank you. That's really nice to hear that you enjoyed it um cool so we have unknown as well in case there's you know some unknown code detected that we do not explicitly handle here um you know let's say we specify we want to detect ean8 and for some reason it detects some other code i don't know why maybe you know there's there could be some case where this happens we also have an unknown flag here. Um, this should, you know, really just never be used. But you know, in some cases, it might happen that this will be unknown. Um, see you in the next live, my dude. Yes, thank you. I'll yeah. See you in the next live. Good night. Um, cool. Yeah. 
I think iOS is pretty much done, actually. I, I think we have everything on iOS. Yeah. Fe finish iOS types. Cool. So, Android now. Mm. We somehow need to send the events to JavaScript here. It's a bit tricky. Let's do the other code types first. So we had, let's move this over here. We need to write it four times actually. This is very annoying. But yeah, it is what it is, I guess. I think we could write a parser that actually, um, Let's see. We could have two values in here. And then we find. No, that's gonna use reflection. That's not a good idea, to be honest. No, that's not a good idea. Okay, whatever. Let's just implement it for now. Maybe we can improve it in the future. Code 128. Um, let's do this like this again. So we have code 128, we have code 39, we have code 93, code bar, code 120, where did I name it? Code 129, code 129. It's 128, right? Did I name it 129 anywhere? And it's gone. Oh shit, I'm tripping. EN13, EN8, previously, okay. Thank you, <laughs> nice catch. UPC, E, QR, PDF417, let's take data matrix. Nice. And now, maybe we could use the same naming. Okay, let's try this. Barcode dot format. I wonder if this works. This would be pretty funny if that works. Holy shit, it worked. For almost all cases, PDF 417. Amazing. <laughs> um, and now the same thing other way around. can use source copy to stream Android device to computer and control it. Yeah, would be a good idea to kind of get that going for the next stream, I guess. Um, but for now, I don't want to, you know, waste any more time. It's already 11 p.m. for me. Um, okay, let's see what's going on here. I'm not using that. No, I'm using it. Um, Oh yeah, we have unknown in this case, right? So else would be unknown. And then now the same thing from a union value. Shit, I deleted, deleted that code. Um, so like this. Yeah, I guess. Code 128 now. <laughs> code 39, code of bar, EN13, EN8, ITF, UPC E. How do we call that? UPC E. QR, PDF 417, let's check. And data matrix. Nice. We got all code types implemented.
Oh yeah. Um, gotta throw the error now, the new error that we just created. Code type not supported. So camera errors dot or camera error dot kt. Um, class code type not supported error. Camera error. Uh, code scanner code type not supported. The code type. And then we just do the same error as, wait, what was it called in, in iOS? Um, code some, yeah, this one. The code type. not supported by the code scanner code type, code type or actually I'm sorry not string maybe um, Yes, union value, right? Union value. Um, cool, yeah, so now we have support for every code type. Mm. Implement all other code types on Android. Good night, bro. Good night, Angelo. Um, Right, so now we just need to send the event to JavaScript. Um, which should happen here in camera outputs. Yeah, so how do we do that? How do we do that? Camera outputs. Okay, we have camera session and in there we have an on error event, amazing. We probably also need the uh, on code scan. Event here. Awesome. Actually, maybe we don't want this event right here, but instead pass it along here, right? So maybe um, val on code scanned. list of barcodes and on error we do another event so every time you create a new code scanner output yes this is where we want to go um, formed it for me and now we have um, so the code scanner output can actually make use of so let's do barcode suddenly size or any is empty oh, let's do 
Do you guys prefer if is not empty like this? Others oh, is not empty. Is not empty or size larger than zero? Yes. Thank you, Simeon. Good night. Um, if barcodes is not empty, we're going to call on. No, we're going to do. Wait, where's the code scanner? On code scan. There we go. Um, and on failure, we're going to just do code scanner. Shit, code scanner dot on error. We're going to pass the error along. Amazing. And now if we run this, let's see what happens. Unsupported top level event type camera code detected. We called it camera code scan, not detected actually, right? I just noticed that this should be a separate thread. Code detected. Yeah, oi, we call it code scanned. There we go, that's why it crashed. I'm pretty confident that this works already, but let's just try it to double check. There we go. Android is implemented as well. Nice. Cool. Everything nice and implemented. Um, code looks very sexy so far. Thank you. Um, I want to you know, optimize or reorganize the Android part here a bit. Um, I think it's a very, very stable foundation already. I mean, it's just a bit trickier to do on Android than it is on iOS. Um, I'm pretty happy with the concept of like a core structure, which is a core camera component. You could theoretically use this in a native Android app. The rest is just, you know, React Native bindings. Um, uh, but yeah, as you just saw, we, you know, kind of wrapped the outputs a lot. So maybe we could just simplify this a bit. But other than that, I'm, I think the Android code is really, really clean. Um, yeah, I'm talking a lot. I don't know. It works on Android. Um, oh, we're not passing the codes, actually. Why did no one tell me that? Types, non types. So Array. Let's see. Mm, there we go. QR. Okay, let's try scanning a QR code. Okay, it scans. Amazing. Um, and now let's also pull up maybe a barcode. Oops. Uh, let's use this barcode or like any other barcode on this screen. I move this right here. And then we use, let's pass in Wait, what, what was barcode again? Which one was barcode? Um, EAN13, was it this one? I don't know, let's save. It does not crash and it detects it, amazing. Value is weird and type is unknown, so I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, the value is correct. It detects, yeah. Zero, three, six, amazing, nice. Um, it works, you can change this on the fly and it switches to different barcodes. You, the app doesn't need to be restarted, it doesn't crash, you just change it and save and it works. The type is for some reason, previously was QR, now it is unknown. 
value is the right number. Yes, value is the right number, but type is unknown. Let's quickly take a look at that first. Um, on called scanned. Let's see. No, events. And then type would be the union value. Wait, hold on. How am I? Is it even barcode.format? It is, right? It should be. Oh, no, never mind. Format EAN13, it should return EAN13. Not unknown. I don't know why it is returning unknown. Apparently format, uh, maybe format is like this joined version now of, let's see, there has to be any docs. Is there a doc? Yeah. Yeah, returns the barcode format, for example, format EAN13. I don't know why it does not do that. Did it do that? No, it did not do that, right? Mm -hmm. Weird, it doesn't get to type. Yes, you're right. Barcode.format. I mean, what happens if we just remove QR? Maybe it combines the bit mask. You know what, I'm, what I mean? Let's do this again. See what happens. Type is unknown. Can we scan a different one? Ah, oh, there it detects EN13. I don't know, maybe some codes are just weird. I mean, I guess you're interested in value anyways. You don't, you're not really interested in type. So yeah, and it works. It even detects multiple QR codes, as you can see here. Um, there's one code here and another one here in the array. So we have two codes detected. Um, but yeah, I think it's funny that it detects unknown for some types. I would honestly just say this is a bug in the in the Android library. Um, but it works amazingly fine here. The only difference we now have is on Android, we have absolute coordinates here, or not absolute, sorry, but we have like screen coordinates. Um, whereas on iOS, we have, you know, values ranging from zero to one. Uh, so we kind of need to map those. Um, let's just fix pass code types on Android. Um, and the way we can fix that, for example, is there simply maybe are other barcode types which aren't EAN. Yeah, maybe it's just a different type, um, but it, it still detected this one, even though we configured it to detect EAN 13 specifically. So that's what I'm, why I introduced unknown before. Uh, if I didn't introduce unknown before, we just would have seen a crash here. Um, so yeah, in some cases, there's just an unknown type. Um, hold on, what did I want to do? Code scanner. And then we can kind of do like let cards equals preview view dot. We can, I think we can do like preview view and then. video preview layer dot ah there we go so we can do metadata output rect converted from layer rect so this would convert a rectangle in layer coordinates to a rectangle in the interest of the coordinate space of an actually that's the wrong direction we want to go into the other direction ah this one layer rect converted from metadata output rect so this is a way we could convert this to viewpoints. Um, 
I'm just not sure if there's why not attach debugger. Yeah, in some cases it's just you know attaching a debugger takes long. So I guess I just you know thought about the problem and what a possible solution might be, and then just said okay, you know what, that's maybe it. Um, and we figured it out kind of. Uh, and the debugger won't tell us anything. I mean the the format will be some different value. It will be some other format, um, which we don't support yet. And some of this format could be, yeah, it could be something here that we just don't support yet. I don't know. They also have format unknown, you know, maybe they just don't know the format and detected it. So yeah. Anyways, um, I would consider Android done, to be honest. We could convert that to layer coordinates, but I think this is a bit weird because we don't necessarily keep the preview view. You know, maybe if we add the ski, inter um, ski integration, then we don't have a native preview view anymore and we have a skier preview view. So I don't know if, if the preview view is a good place to handle that. Maybe we just want to convert it here by detecting the, you know, width and height. Maybe we can also do it like this. Oh, there we go. Output rec converted, yeah. We could just do object.bounce. And now if we, oops. Now, if we run it again, Samsung Smart Fridge, then we're going to ideally see that the coordinate system is no longer from zero to one, but instead from zero to whatever the width of the screen is. This is the right function, or do we want to use the other one? Let's see. Covers a rectangle of interest in the coordinate system of an AV. Yes. Yeah, this sounds good. Let's check this out. This is also, you know, another test if we can actually detect those codes. So let's run this. It's still starting. This is, by the way, running at 60 FPS. I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's like really smooth. So let's try this. Um, and it's, I think this was the wrong <laughs> method, um, but it does detect the codes. So this is pretty amazing. Yeah, this is what we want. Actually, this is not what we want. Meta data output. Yeah, maybe it is what we want. I don't know. Let's rerun it. Yeah, it detects the EA, EA Sports. It's in the game. Um, the EAN 13 code properly. And it only detects one code at a time though on iOS. I don't know if that's a limitation or something, but yeah, it is it is what it is. Okay, let's see if it uses the correct coordinate system now. It still doesn't use the correct coordinate system. Why not? Is it the same method we already had? Did we just use the same method again? Or did we use another method? Did we just use the same method? I don't know. Transformed output trans. Huh, I don't know. Um, let's try this one again. 
Maybe I just used the same method twice and I just didn't realize it. It's getting pretty late here. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Um, I have an idea. Yeah. Do we want to create it? We actually do want it to be relative to the preview, right? So it should actually be preview view. here cg rect layer rec converted so okay <clears throat> what's wrong don't you have to multiply by resolutions yes <clears throat> this we have to multiply by resolutions um <clears throat> But we don't want to do that manually because uh, doing it manually doesn't take you know mirroring and scaling and stuff like that into consideration and resize mode and blah 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 <laughs> i don't know what you're adding at this point anymore um yeah it is it sorry i didn't talk a lot right now um but yeah we multiplying by resolutions is just not a good idea because it's not always correct because it might be scaled or rotated or whatever and this one takes care of all of that so if we now scan the codes nothing happens oh, wait what oh okay just lagged um yeah amazing it works it's a cor uh, the correct coordinate system now really really cool stuff um that's it Fix iOS use preview coordinate system. And then, yeah. The type of code to scan, code scanner, code types. The types of, the type of code to scan for, to configure the code scanner. This sound doesn't sound English, but whatever. Call back. Call back for. I don't know how to call it. A call back for. <laughs> Um, a callback to call whenever the codes, whenever a new code, uh, the detected codes, scanned codes change the region of interest across the scanner's new area to the specific area. the scanner's view area to the specific region of interest. I don't know. Let's just call it that, whatever. Um, the type of the code then was scanned. String value if
frame the location of the code re relative to the camera preview in DP, I think. Cool, and I guess we also want to add documentation for that. But I'm, I think I'm going to do that tomorrow, to be honest. Um, yeah, nice. So this was a code scanner in, what is it, three and a half hours for iOS, Android, and the JavaScript part, including types, custom error handling, coordinates of the code, um, and yeah, support for all, how many codes is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve codes, or thirteen, I guess, with unknown, or twelve possible codes. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Um, I do believe that this is much faster than implementing it in a frame processor, unless you, actually it might not necessarily be always faster. Um, let's see, it might be faster on iOS because this is a very specific iOS functionality. Um, the AV, what is it called? capture metadata output um, is a very specific or a custom you know implementation on iOS or a custom feature on iOS which might have some special hardware support or some special you know OS integration and might be better on memory and on performance than if you would implement this manually in a frame processor so that was also ultimately the reason why I decided to add it to vision camera now um, yes on Android I don't know I mean it's just probably a bit more convenient to have this functionality or this API, I guess, instead of, um, you know, frame processors um, for code scanning specifically. Um, but yeah, frame, processor, frame processors are not going anywhere. So in case that, you know, was unclear, frame processors are still the, the only way or the best way to, you know, implement face detection, object detection, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, QR code scanners are just much more convenient now. Um, yeah, cool. I guess things to do. Um, I'm going to write some documentation tomorrow on this, um, on how you can use the code scanner um, and you know what to watch out for, blah, blah, blah. Then I'm going to maybe add some more error handling. I don't know if this is enough error handling. I think. I think it is enough. I don't think there's anything you can do wrong, but we'll see, you know, everybody like, you know, someone will find a way to do it, to use it wrong. Um, then I'm going to um, refactor this a bit, uh, this hook. Um, yeah, so documentation, maybe error handling, maybe refactor the hook. And then I'm going to use the, um, where is it? The unbundled version on Android so that it will be dynamically downloaded and I will tell a user how he you know, needs to integrate it in his app or if he doesn't want to dynamically download it, he can just change the implementation to the bundled version. So yeah, that's possible as well. But yeah, I don't wanna you know, introduce 2.4 megabytes for new users who are not using the QR code scanner and simply want to take pictures. So that's why I wanna use the unbundled version instead. Oh, sorry, this one. Um, yeah, is there any, there's tips to improve real time performance. Don't capture input at the camera's native resolution. Yes, we're not doing that. We're doing 720p. Um, bear in mind, minimum size. Yeah, there's no real minimum size, I guess. There we can improve different resolution. Throttle calls to the detector. Is there a way to kind of see if it is running? Let's see that. Um, uh, do, 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 do. I don't think there's a way to detect if it is currently running, to be honest. 
Uh, let's see where. Camera outputs. There is the output. Wait, did we change something? Oh, we formatted the code. Okay. Um, I don't think is busy. Can we do like um, scanner dot? It was optional features. Okay, there's for some reason an optional features API. Anyways, um, we did format the code here. Mm. Okay, if you use camera X, we don't use that. If you use the output of the detector to over the graphics and input image, first get the result from a kit, then render the image in a single step. Yes, this is obvious. Yes, we use this format. Amazing, we are fast. We're doing all best practices here. Cool, um, I'm going to do these other things tomorrow in the code scanner. PR and then hopefully merge it tomorrow um, and then do a 3.3.0 release with some other exciting changes such as, uh, I don't know what this is, fixing a crash on iOS, uh, fixing, uh, sorry, on Android, fixing a build error on iOS, using simpler cameras, blah, 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 just some other. I don't know what this is. Oh, okay, dynamic video format. Yeah, some other fixes. Um, yeah, 3.3.0, hopefully tomorrow. Um, there's a new issue. Execution failed. It's the camera error again, uh, the hardware. Yeah, whatever, I don't care. Um, cool, thanks everyone who actually watched until the end. Um, I hope you found it interesting and yeah, maybe I'll do another code stream at some point in the future, maybe for Skia frame processors, maybe, um, I don't know, some other stupid shit. Um, yeah, now the, the pack opening starts. Let's do a FIFA pack opening. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, good night, guys. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. <laughs>